cắm phai cả ANSCAN submarine cable system links Australia to Canada via Norfolk Island, Fiji and Hawaii with a spur cable from Norfolk Island to New Zealand. It's one of the world's largest ever telecommunications projects. It's my great pleasure to welcome you here this morning on behalf of the Overseas Telecommunications Commission for the official opening of the ANSCAN cable. Also, uh, a warm welcome to those OTC staff members who are enjoying a function on the fourth floor of OTC House in Martin Place and are receiving a broadcast of these proceedings. We're very well aware of you being uh, with us and part of this ceremony this morning. We cross live to London for a direct telecast of the opening celebrations in the United Kingdom, uh, including a speech by Her Majesty the Queen. Caroline, I'm quite sure that Her Majesty, and I know that everybody here listening in London will be interested to hear what the weather is like in Sydney on your Thursday morning. Yes, Andrew, I'm sorry about this, but it can only be described as English. <laughs> Actually, the planning for the system started, um, well, back around 1977 when uh, there was a series of meetings between 1977 and 80 international meetings uh, which determined that, that it was desirable to have a new Trans-Pacific cable system, uh, ultimately to replace the existing uh, smaller size compact cable. Management group consisted of uh, Mr. Muir, a system manager for the whole of the project, system general manager engineering. And myself is a regional manager for Australia, joining three other regional managers: one from Canada, one from New Zealand, and one from Fiji. And then my group, uh, we had John Phillips, um, who was the deputy regional manager of Australia for the project, and he really led the the cable group. Morning. How are you? Yes, can you hear me? Just fine. How are you, mate? I'm well, and you? Oh, we're just doing that, yeah. That, that's, that's a New South Wales expression, actually. <laughs> One of the key aspects of submarine systems is uh, a high degree of reliability, and uh, in 1981 I went over as part of uh, an inspection team that was set up to, to monitor the quality assurance arrangements for uh, the STC system. We had a training period that uh, involved a number of OTC staff. We built AMSCAN for, for a number of reasons. Prime amongst them was the need to make sure that for the coming decade we have diversity uh, for the carriage of our main international telecommunication streams to, US, to North America and to Europe. We could of course carry all our traffic on satellite, uh, but in the interests of reliability and also to carry some Specialised services where the extra delay time associated with satellite circuits is, is not acceptable to the users. And we like to have a, a, a mix of cable and satellite circuits. Throughout OTC, uh, just about every uh, branch and division has been involved in some way in ANSCAN. 
first occasion at Norfolk Island, I went for about a week and I was there for a month for the shore end landing. It was a great demonstration of the validity of Murphy's first law, that if anything can go wrong, it will. Eventually it worked out. We were very much subject to the weather and while the sun might have been shining above us, if you're coming, if you're trying to land a cable through 10 foot waves, a 10 foot surf, it's just not on. You go back and regroup and wait for another day. The history of submarine cables in the Pacific has been very good. But you can't uh, have such a large telecommunications artery at risk without some um, way of maintaining it. And the Pacific Guardian has been built especially for that purpose and will be stationed in Fiji. Well, the moment we have all been waiting for has now arrived. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Her Majesty the Queen. The ability to speak across the world by telephone has lost none of its wonder, while its usefulness has grown. This new cable will allow many more people to share in the benefits it brings. I'm sure that it will help international understanding and the development of trade between distant countries. I send my congratulations to all concerned on a job well done. And my greetings to those of you watching or listening in Wellington, Sydney, Fiji and Vancouver. I now have great pleasure in declaring open the new ANSCAN cable. Why spend nearly $400 million on a new cable system? Because it will combine with other cables, satellites and terrestrial networks to link the Pacific region with the entire world, with vastly increased telephone connections, telex, computer communications and facsimile links. A combination of submarine cables and satellites gives much greater route diversity and communications security than either can provide alone. The ANSCAN cable will provide many times the capacity of its predecessor, with 1,380 voice circuits between Sydney and Vancouver, and 480 circuits between Norfolk Island and Auckland. Lying on the ocean floor, sometimes more than five kilometres deep, the ANSCAN cable will help OTC keep Australians in touch with the world well into the 21st century. Everybody gets together, has a good time. Melbourne and Sydney come down, enjoy themselves, get to meet each other and renew old acquaintances. <laughs> well, Wagga started in, originally in 47, the first trip up, and it commenced by two men uh, under the name of the late Lou Sherbin and Lionel Cowan over the Morse Quay. Why don't we get together? play cricket. We didn't have ladies of course, it was uh, more or less a buck's turn when we first started. And uh, as the years progressed we, uh, we introduced golf and then we had the bowls and the ladies came along. Since the ladies arrived it's really put us, or the two uh, officers on the map. I played goal attack and Deirdre played goal shooter and before the game we decided that um, she'd feed the ball to me as much as possible and that was how we won by as many just by working together and the other girls bringing the ball up from the other end up to us. Um, we had 
practically the same team as we as we had last year so um, it was a lot easier for us to work together than I think for the Melbourne girls but they still played really well. I thought we played reasonably well. I think the Sydney chaps, the two chaps we played with, uh, Howard um, Joyner, I thought he he played very well. I thought he was going to win it, the Sydney individual, because coming into the 17th, he was he was playing very well, and he blew it on the 17th, and then I think he lost a little bit of concentration, and I thought he would have won it. But overall, I thought uh, everything went well. Uh, Sydney were just too good on straight away, and uh, well, we had no complaints. It was just enjoyable. Joy would be out there and have a go. I know I don't play often, but uh, if I was playing cricket, I'd make a hundred. I did all right, but I know how the rest of the team did. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it just depends on how the rest of them go. Going down to pub now, Liz? Well, I certainly am. <laughs> you coming? <laughs> oh, he just walked out, wasn't it? I wasn't seeing it. As a matter of fact, I was sitting down. Yeah, just going to his bartender. Bowling against the Melbourne team it was quite difficult, especially when I was uh, bowling to a left-hander and a right-hander at the same time. It was quite hard to get my line. Um, we had a couple of lucky breaks, but we, we didn't manage to get right through the whole team, which was a bit of a credit to them. Tony's a great captain because it was a young team this year. I think he set the field field extremely well to keep them down to the number of runs he did. He made the most of his bowlers, he's a great bowler in David Keffel, who bowls a great line and length right consistently throughout the day. Cramps were the uh, big thing of the day. The heat was just drying people's bodies out. Once we were in there we found that it was much harder to push for the singles um, with Melbourne's fielding attack. The plan was really to uh, just get go in, get our eye in and see if we could put up a bit of a stance. We thought we had plenty of time to do it in. And uh, once, we, once we got a, say, 50 up, that was our job really as openers. And we had a lot more Good batsman down the line. How's the bowling? How's the bowling? Yeah. Oh, good as we expected, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. After last night. That was a top. That was, that was a top night. Yeah, it was really good. It was good. You were spinning on your head, or maybe you just your head was spinning. Sort of slipping away from Sydney from the from the last over. It was getting increasingly hard. 
to make the runs. And when it got to that last ball with Warwick having to hit a six to win, uh, it was unfortunate to pick the longest boundary on the field. Although he tonked it with all his might, it was a, it was a top effort, but caught right on the boundary. What can you, what can you do? <laughs> I told you, like six months ago, we'd do it. Well done, Melbourne. Great. It's a hat trick for me. Hey, Thanks, fellas. Hey. Thanks for that, mate. Never mind, mate. Well what a game, really. Great game. Very good 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 game. Melbourne made 105 in 50 overs. Yeah. And Sydney made 101 in 50 overs. Therefore, Melbourne wins by uh, what's that, four runs. Something. We've tried really hard today, and, uh, and in Sydney, you've come back a lot better than uh, what they did last year. So to win a game was great. So. Oh, top game! You couldn't really complain about it. Very close. It's a shame one team has to lose in a situation like that. Melbourne played very well indeed, and uh, Sydney boys tried their hearts out. So it was a good effort by both teams. I think. Well, Congratulations to Melbourne. Today, is, as you all know, is a, is a very significant day in the, in the OTC calendar. 
it is in fact uh, the Chinese New Year. <laughs> and uh, as you probably know, we're, we're just about to enter the year of the ox. But it also happens to be the day before Bill Schmidt's 65th birthday. And uh, that's why we're here today, to farewell Bill and Isabel, to wish them well for the future, and to hear a few speeches from some of his associates uh, to speak on behalf of us all. I'm delighted to be given the opportunity to be the first speaker. It seems a common way we have with you, Bill, that I'm the first speaker and, as usual, you'll have the last word. <laughs> Bill Schmidt, as general manager, was the club patron. Since Bill has held this dual role, I am pleased to report that relations between the club and management have been most amicable, due, I believe, to the importance Bill has placed on the social and sporting scene within this organisation. I don't know whether you recall it, Mr Schmidt. I'll, uh, I'll call you Bill on this occasion. I come from that uh, old Victorian group of people who always tended to call their superior officers Mr. But today, uh, you're going, I'll call you Bill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to say that it gives me great pleasure to be here to say a few words on behalf of myself and staff, Bill, even though it's tinged with some regret in that we're saying goodbye not only to our chief executive, but to someone who's become over the years, a, I believe, a friend and colleague. Being one of the last speakers, the good things are always left to last, aren't they, George? I'm sure you'll agree. From tomorrow, starts a new way of life for you. Not only for you, but for Isabel. Um, she'll find that um, maybe no long days at the hairdressers, no long lunches, a lot less golf days. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a lot more golf days. You've had some marvellous speakers, much better than I. It isn't really my task to, to emulate them. It's really my task to, to say on behalf of all of you, Bill and Isabel, goodbye, and all the very best. I, I like OTC, love OTC, and I love the people that are in it. I think the place is in good shape. I wouldn't worry too much about it, because the enormous strength in this place is in the people. Uh, in the last uh, or two or three months, we've given away something like 200 20-year awards. Now, apart from the enormous experience in that bunch of people, uh, that's about, uh, what, 9% of the total staff. And so there's an enormous nucleus of loyal, experienced people here to, to, to encourage us to do the proper things in the years ahead. It's, a, it's of enormous uh, uh, pleasure to me that George Mulpey is to be the next managing director. Now, I don't know. I, I'm about to enjoy retirement in the same way as I have my work, and I wish each and every one of you all the best for the future. of course since 1946 I know the organization pretty well and I think uh, I'm well placed therefore to lead it uh, in the future uh, I don't believe it's in a crisis situation but I think of course there are lots of things that we do we can do better because the changing nature of the industry as much as anything else well I know uh, almost all of you people I'm sure you all know me uh, you'll know that uh, any managing director uh, is going to want to uh, make sure the corporation runs as well as it can. Uh, I'm not looking forward to any drastic changes at the outset, but of course there will be changes. Uh, there have to be. Uh, one thing that the Act almost requires us to do is to have a rethink of uh, the top management structure. And I've already uh, uh, initiated uh, work in that regard. As far as uh, 
your day-to-day -day routine in ATC goes, I suspect at the outset you won't notice too much difference. But I look forward to uh, working with you all over the next 12 months or so to, uh, to further improve uh, the already good image that OTC's got in the community and in making sure that we remain uh, amongst the most successful of the Commonwealth's public enterprises. Of course, in the longer run, uh, there's going to be significant change in the technology we use, the development of digital networks, the advent of optical fibre submarine cable systems, uh, new generations in satellite communications, and the development of new customer services such as Minerva and other business-oriented services. They're going to uh, all mean change for us as we go uh, into the future in telecommunications.